at two sports check on this monday morning it is the 20th day of december 2021 my name is daniel wahone our sign language interpreter within these are is lensa Dingo. and one conversation down on this uh, you know what we call the 2021 finale for sports check it was about motorsport we'll be coming to one in the next hour uh, still about motorsport but right now it's the sport that is played by the kings and also played by the generals the people who are up there we're talking about chess and all of last week kenya hosted 166 school students who were participating at the africa chess championships kenya had 61 south africa had you know, 42 basically they were taking about almost close to a third of the number of participants who were there but ghana nigeria botswana well, uh, malawi zambia zimbabwe all represented at that championship and to tell us about that and the experiences from that championship we've got the president of the africa chess confederation louis Tube. well let me say i'll pronounce it the way a kenyan would do it Tube. but how do you pronounce it <laughs> no it's pronounced Nube. all right Nube. Nube. yeah slight click <laughs> that, that tells you he's down from somewhere towards the south of africa coming from zambia and you know for you pre, uh, to bed. let's talk about organizing this event it was organized in what we'd say was some not the easiest of times yes. the story about this championship and eventually kenya holding it yeah. this year okay ba basically um you know we've come from a very difficult phase uh, where contact sports in terms of face-to-face uh, -face sport has actually been uh, uh be uh, given us a lot of worry so to speak uh, the pandemic has uh, really hit us quite hard and chess where you sit next to your opponent uh, and face to face um, that is one of the uh, uh, things sports that has been really affected oh, yeah. and uh, the fact that there's a lot of contact when yes. it comes to handling yeah. the pieces yes 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 that and also because we all play in the in the same hall in the same room and basically you're next to each other so that has really led to a situation where the whole of last year we only had one uh, tournament at the beginning and that was in Sierra Leone uh, then uh, uh, that was uh, quite early in the year that's in 2000 in, in the 2020 um, uh, more Towards the end of 2020, we really had no tournaments, and we resorted to having online events. And uh, although that is a new phase, that has really picked up quite a bit. And uh, bec because before it was uh, it was active, but not as active as it is now. So we ended up having a situation where even seminars and workshops and a lot of tournaments were being held online. Even our meetings now became online events, and which is good in terms of uh, uh, having more people pa uh, participate. Uh, in uh, you know the, the, the building aspects of, of the game but uh, in terms of contact which actually really gives you uh, a way in which you uh, meet people and also socialize uh, that was really affected then earlier on this year we had uh, uh, the first actual first event this year face-to-face uh, -face, uh, event was the uh, African News Championships in Ghana and then uh, this is the second one uh, then we've got the third one uh, next week, which is the uh, African Junior in Monrovia. Uh, so basically, uh, the, what I would say, the, the good aspect of this is that we, uh, all the youth events, uh, most of the youth events, apart from the zone ones, uh, we've managed to get them started this year. Um, obviously, we've got the Omicron uh, version that, uh, that is coming through now, uh, which we hope will not derail our plans for next year. Well, you've mentioned about the transition, um, and let me talk about online chess here, because we know we've seen chess grandmasters, I think, was it Karpov or Kasparov, who played against a machine. What was the transition and some of the lessons where people play chess um, online, because the way it moves is the same, and how you try to blend it such that if someone is in Nairobi and another one is in Lusaka, you mm. know, they don't have that little advantage of a server delay because you've already seen my move and because of the delay in that move being picked yeah i have a few more seconds to think no actually the, the that aspect I, th I think has really uh been overtaken because of the development of technology so essentially you've got real time uh, as you are speaking just to, you could say micro microseconds in terms of this so you don't really see a move before an, another guy makes a move so you can actually an opponent you are playing you are playing in real time online the only aspect that is that has really been uh, uh, uh something that you need to look at is uh, the element of cheating 
because if I am playing an opponent who is, uh, let's say, who is miles and miles away, now the question is in the background, am I playing that person alone or do that, does he have his coach behind him? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, that is the aspect that we, we really have to manage at the moment. And so we've got the issue of screen, having screens and uh, uh, all sort of uh, uh, gadgets that make, make you able to see throughout also you have a 360 vision yes and yeah, that's what we, we try as much as possible uh, so basically and then you've got arbiters online arbiters we cannot uh, uh, completely rule out 100 percent because you never know what gadgets uh, are actually in place because uh, uh, when you play physically uh, the normal game uh, when you go into a hall there is a uh, uh, playing area you have to surrender your phones and everything else and you are monitored uh, because sometimes you can actually play a game because of the time that you have maybe you have more time and you're able to walk out and come back again so you actually monitored throughout that there's that there's no cheating so uh, that's an element that really that uh, that we need to manage that we have to manage uh, so far it's it's uh it's actually worked quite well because for example the african youth uh, uh, uh championships this year were supposed to actually be held last year yes and what happened was that we went to an online version and uh, um, so with that online version, uh, we found, actually found that even now with the uh, real-time version, the physical version, most of the players who did well on the online version are the same ones who did well. Because, uh, you know, it's not everyone who, who sort of thinks about cheating. And also, you know, when you talk about cheating and, uh, and uh, being helped offline or someone you're online and someone is next to you, um, you also don't enjoy the game because uh, between you and me, if I'm playing you and uh, you beat me, but you know that uh, maybe you had a coach helping you there. There's no, that satisfaction is not there. So there's an element of guilt which is, which is good in most people. You see? So, so here, here is the whole thing. How then do you breed honesty amongst, you know, from younger generations? Because if you're used to playing in a situation where somebody is telling you now, move this piece this way, move this other piece this way, eventually you may want to become a chess master or something, then everything changes. Yeah. How do you develop this with the coaches of the youth and also amongst the arbiters? Okay, well, well actually what, uh, what the World Chess Federation has done, is what basically uh, an anti-cheating unit within there, and, uh, but there is also the element of ethics amongst yourselves. Eh? And, uh, but like you're saying, the most important thing is to really, when you bring up the kids, you get them to a level where they understand that, uh, look, you have to be fair. And, you know, sometimes in, in, fo in football, there are times when you really want to win at all costs. Uh -huh. And, uh, sorry, in, in any sport. In, you, I mean, in, yeah, football in, is a good example. Yeah, you want to, <laughs> yeah, so you, you play, you, you, what you do is that you try and you cheat left, right, and center. But again, uh, when you go off, either the people who are with you, your coaches, even your family, if they know that you have, uh, uh, you only won because you cheated, your reputation itself. Uh, really suffers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as, as you know, I mean, in, in football is the sport where people have actually uh, focused on, but also in chess, what we have done is that we've got various areas, even on the continent, um, when, when you sit down and discuss, you know, the arbiters, all of them have got to look at the cheating aspect, the anti-cheating aspect, you put in place anti-cheating measures, and those are really that, uh, uh, you could say, at the moment, I would say 99% uh, they're working. Uh, uh, sometimes you could say 100%, because you, you never know what happens in between, because sometimes with the, whatever ja gadgets they're using, uh, you don't know what, uh, uh, thing, um, what advantage they get. But I would like to, to, to look at it and say, possibly, I think, over 99%. I know that at a certain level, you probably have heard that even at the highest level, some, some grandmasters have been caught cheating, but uh, that is a very, very minor uh, occasion amongst the whole sport. Well, we're speaking with the president of the Africa Chess Confederation, Luis Dube, and yeah, it's about the school's championship. Now, one of the things that happens with any sport, then they tell you, is train them young, make them grow when they're young, make sure they perform at the best, and let them start getting into levels. Candidate master, world chess master, feeder master, you know, titles like that in chess. You could first start by breaking down that progression for a oh. chess player from when you're a novice uh -huh. to when you'd be considered a grandmaster okay B basically you start uh, um you know we've got uh, uh title regulations uh, and and the, at the moment you've got a situation where the first title is uh, the the uh, candidate master and uh, they are actually 
in two sections you've got the women's part and the men's part um well now when you say the men's part uh, over time we have actually uh, gone beyond what you'd say of men's part because we've opened up that side it's called an open section now when you say open section it means that the women can actually participate there if they feel that they are strong enough uh -huh. so you've got the women's part so you start with the candidate master the feeder master uh, the international master and the grandmaster so basically uh, the grandmaster the foot title is international grandmaster so you've got this on one side which is on the open section okay uh -huh. yeah then you've got the women so you just add w so we've got the women candidate master women feeder master women international international master and women grandmaster now uh, a lot of them grow up to that level where they go to a level where they say, okay, no, I'm now a woman grandmaster. It's not equivalent. The, uh, what, you need, what you need is in terms of performance rating and uh, the actual achievements in title. Um, they are much stronger amongst, they, they are much more uh, uh, thing difficult to get when you are on the, on the, on the open side. Yeah. yeah. So some gra gra gravitate from saying, okay, now I've reached uh, the woman grandmaster. Now I want to move to the to be a grandmaster, an international grandmaster. So that is the, the progression that you have. Well, the beauty of this sport is if you're good, you will always progress up that. Now, mm. I mean, from the Africa Schools Championship and looking at how it's being picked up in the continent, what have been your experiences? Because we saw that this competition had from the under nine still to the under 18s. Yeah, under what, 17. And, and the under 17. Yes. So how have you seen the sport being picked up and how these youngsters are growing in the sport such that someone would be called uh going for worlds um for i mean for a, uh would be a candidate master say at th uh, at the age of 13 and even a world chess master at the age of 17 or so okay uh, actually what has happened uh, over the years is that uh, uh, firstly this event started in, to, in, to, in 2015 so what we have uh, what we held here last week uh, uh, which basically we closed up yesterday was the sixth edition because we missed the 2020 edition so it was a sixth well, edition and uh, <laughs> president well those are some of the uh, videos that on that you are seeing there is the yeah. eighth grade chess championship the africa school chess championships that's yes. a tournament that was yes. being taking place in nairobi last week and came to a close yesterday yes mm -hmm. yeah so so um over the years uh what you do is that uh, uh within each age group uh, there is a title a title uh, uh, thing um, that is offered depending on especially the ones that win now progressively there is a, there's a whole list of the, the title regulations that you that you have and also uh, we've added now uh, the World Chess Federation has added a requirement of uh, rating you have to meet a particular rating mm -hmm. so you get a provisional title and then when you reach a particular rating you get the title confirmed okay. so progressively uh, the under th uh, the, the under you've got the under 7 under 9 under 11 under 13 under 15 so basically you've got uh, six so basically when you add the women's side the open the the, the women's side you've got a whole grouping of uh, of uh, 12 yeah so in each each group there's a different uh, requirement for you to attain a particular title now uh when you reach uh, for example under 17 you you don't you you cannot get a grandmaster title uh, from there you are still at that lower end where you've got the feeder master mm -hmm. title and um but progressively you you have to participate in other events and get your rating to a particular level uh, to be able to get uh, certain titles so and there are whole, uh, there's a whole range so um so with time uh, what happens is that uh, when they start young at seven for example you get the under seven uh in fact we had uh, a, a young girl who is under who is actually four years old who uh -huh. was participating uh, from kenya so when you start them that young i mean i started when i was 13 and uh, uh we, we, i think at secondary school and um lucky enough we had the the you know the school structure already in place uh -huh. normally in chess you find the school structures in place uh, more active than the national one but uh, uh, in certain countries uh, you actually have the school structure already operating separately from the actual the the, the, the national uh, organization um, but uh, the most important thing is to get them working together so that um, because there is uh, the, the odd number of events huh, uh, inter-aged events is the women's uh, the, sorry the the the, the world's the school's title yes and then the the even number of events where you got the under eight uh, uh, under 10 right up to under 18 that is what we call the the the, the african youth championships which was held in ghana and uh, um uh, nigeria um, uh, kenya hosted it in 2018 uh, in kisumu and that was a very, very well organized event so 
got a, a lot of areas where the youngsters can actually develop their thing, their skills. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, that is Louis Chube. He is the uh, president of the Africa Chess Confederation. And also in studio with us, and they will be giving us a demonstration game. I've got two youngsters. One, she won the under uh, uh she won at uh, the under 17 and we are talking about Masi ingado and she she won that they're going to be joining us in a short while and also we've got jimmy kanango won the under 13 bronze medal and uh, talking about how to reach out to schools what's the feedback that the schools have been giving to the national federations and the feedback you received from the school's championship that came to a close yesterday Okay, the, the feedback has actually been excellent. Eh? Uh, um, for example, here as the hosts, eh, what we did was we, we had uh, a seminar uh, where we invited uh, what you call the, the teachers. Now, we want to convert, you know, when you now want to get chess as part of the curriculum, uh, you can get some who are already trained in chess. But what we did now, uh, FIDE, the World Chess Federation, has started a, a, a program where you are getting the teachers who are already teaching. Uh -huh. to now convert to become teachers so to become teachers of chess so we had uh, what is called a preparation of teachers uh, uh, seminar and that is organized by the world chess federation uh, chess and education commission and uh, now that is headed by a grandmaster from armenia uh -huh. uh, grandmaster battle putin he's, he, he chairs that uh, commission and they've come up with a way in which we can say in terms of progressively uh, thing getting chess into the school area you get you train the teachers you get teachers who are interested some I never have played chess but we now you get them to, te to teach you know teaching is is an art uh, you know it's an art in itself and uh, sometimes you can be a very good grandmaster but if you don't have the teaching attributes you cannot transfer that knowledge to the youngsters so whether you are teaching history english mathematics the, that that skill that you have of teaching now you take that and convert it to test to chess and then you say okay now can you teach because you know with a teacher they will be able to pick up and say okay in a class you're able to pick up and say okay that one needs this help this one needs his help this student needs this help this this people needs this help and when you are able to do that and now you're using chess it means that you have moved one step ahead to pushing chess throughout the the you know the school system now when we called we we're expecting for example when you announced the the the, the seminar okay. we we're expecting about 20 participants and i can tell you we had over 70. that's and a huge zoom meeting yes <laughs> now what we had was that actually um the, the uh, chess kenya had to actually close the invitation uh -huh. within a day of actually uh, making that announcement because the the feedback was so huge that they said okay no we can't we can't we can't manage with this fact so we just close the figure and then they managed to just under 70 and that those that is the number that came through and the enthusiasm was massive so on that score and uh, we are looking across and saying okay now when you teach the teachers their love of the game and then they impart that onto the kids we're very sure that in the next five ten years i think it's going to boom across africa and that's an element that's really we're really looking forward to really pushing uh, and uh, that particular agenda for the development of pace across of chess across the continent let's talk about the gaps that you found um for example from this championship and the gaps that the teachers were talking about that you need to fill those are yeah. the important things that you know i'd like to mention so mm. that everyone can know this um because i know i think two or three months ago i had you know a chess coach and a chess player that was during the world rapids yes um that uh the the kenyan team was playing uh online from mm -hmm. kia but you know they, they kept mentioning about some little gaps here and there what are what are the gaps that need to be to be closed I think uh, mainly I, I would say it's uh, to do with the, uh, the training part. Um, aside from the equipment uh, support and everything else, literature and everything else, the, the resources that help you to go up there. Uh, but those are the gaps that we really need to fill in. So, and. Uh, uh, a lot of that costs money not as much as football or any of the other sports eh? because i mean if i have a chess board now i can use that chess board for the next five ten years depending on how i keep it uh, especially if it's not an electronic board so there's no development mm -hmm. um but uh with uh, uh the main area is actually the resources that are required to actually uh, teach the game to, the, to a particular level where you say okay now we've re gone beyond that uh, and we are able to now compete with the rest of the world so it's more to do with resources uh, 
uh, as opposed to, because once the material once you've got the resources you're able to get the material whether it's online or you go when you go for a cinema you're able to order so for me it's the main the main gaps are to do with the, the resources that are required to push us there well we're hearing from um Luis Ntube, he is the president of the Africa Chess Confederation. First of all, um, because I know we'd like to move on to our youngsters, mm -hmm. um, we had one case. You know, by the way, you are talking about equipment. Let me ask you about this equip about the equipment. Yes. What are the opportunities for people who make um, who are in uh, the tr trade crafts ah. in Africa? Because yeah. you know what, you know, when we were growing up and we play checkers, we'd pull up something like this. Yes, you know the boxes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You yeah. know, draw them up and yeah. pick the bottle tops, one with a crown liner yeah, exposed that, yeah. and the other one yeah. the other way around. What are the opportunities uh, for the chess ecosystem? Yeah, I, actually, what, what has happened now is with the growth of chess, it means that that particular industry, that I've seen a few areas where, uh, even my country, where the, the, the head of chess in the schools uh, section was talking to me about a few months ago about how they are engaging the sculptors to actually come and make the pieces to a certain level. You know, uh, a lot of uh, our people, they don't have the machines to actually mold. Yes. But Maybe they take more time, but they're able to, 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 to sculpt the, the pieces and try and get them to, uh, you know, the uniform part. Uh, so, um, there, there are two aspects. There's the ordering of the equipment. Most of it is uh, the cheapest uh, uh, equipment will be from China, obviously. You get it molded. Uh, but then, at the same time, the people sculpt the, the, the pieces themselves. That is an area that uh, we can actually really push to actually get the entrepreneurs, the youngsters to say, okay, I want to do this. Uh, now, you need a market for that. Uh -huh. And we are creating the market by increasing the popularity of chess. Because without that, the, the people who have got that skill, they can sit back and say, okay, if I make it, who am, who am I going to sell it to? But now they are able with, with the way we are moving now. That market is going to be there for the, uh, the, the artists who actually make those pieces. Well, you've had it. Are you an artist and you want to make chess pieces? Well, then talk to Chess Kenya, wherever you are in Africa. And you've had it from the president of the Africa Chess Confederation, Luis Ntobe. Now... Let us talk to uh, somebody who won the Under-17 Schools Championship. Her name is Masi Ngado. Masi, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Well, you know, Masi, at least I can see your trophy and you can show it on uh, the camera. Tell us about, you know, your experiences at this championship as you won that trophy over the past one week and the competition that you faced. Uh, the tournament was tough. I did my best. I tried... Uh, uh, we had the coaches who trained us before we went for the tournament. Although it was tough, but uh, we did put our best in my category. It was a bit tough, but not that tough, if I may say. Uh, but God is grateful I managed to scoop position one. And sitting along next to Masi is Jamie Kanango. Jamie is an under 13 bronze medalist. Jamie, tell us about you know your experiences there playing at the school's championship and eventually winning a bronze medal for Kenya um for my first international tournament I, act, I would actually say that it was quite good and I'm happy that I actually I won that um it was difficult playing with people from other countries from other places in Africa that we've never seen before or ever been to but I believe it was a good experience and I'm looking forward to doing it again sometime. Well, an inaugural a championship for these two Kenyans. And by the way, Kenya won two gold, three silver, and four bronze medals. And uh, you know what? Um, as you can see, you've got the ch uh, chess pieces there, and you've got the board there. And you know, I will let you play a rapids game and also teach the people every move that you make as you describe that board. And I will start with you, Messi. I um, can see you've got the black pieces, so it means that... Um, Jamie will be the one to start. But he, let's start your experiences playing chess throughout the years and how far you've gone up the rankings, like how, uh, have been mentioned by President Ntube here on this program. Uh, chess has taken me far, if I may say. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I was in Ghana. I want to take part in the AYCC. After winning the nationals, uh, I became first position. And also in 2019, I traveled in Uganda and a lighthouse chess club uh, 
uh, where I got my ratings. So, okay, like, uh, I've been playing chess for quite a, uh, I mean, six years now. It's been good, a good experience, because I've met different people, di trained by different coaches. It's been a bit tough, but uh, usually uh, you're committed to chess, yeah. All right, and let's move over to you, Jenny. Your journey in chess, still under 30. How long have you been playing chess? How far up have you moved? Um, I've been playing the game for, I think, almost four years. And it's taken me very far. Uh, in the game itself and also in my education. I've seen myself improving in my studies and also doing well, interacting with other people and it's helped me develop other sirens. Okay. Now, I'll let you do what you do best and what I would like you to do is to play a 5 minute rapids game. I've got the stopwatch here with me. So what I'm going to do, I can tell, you know, ideally, just by how long you're going to play, you know, you understand the rapids. Uh, you do, Massey. And uh, Jamie, you do understand the rapids? Uh, Playing a quick game, quick moves? That's blitz. All right. So, definitely, we know who's got the white pieces. So you could tell us, and I'm going to change the rules here. Don't be afraid of the president. <laughs> because we are in studio. We are going to let you speak and describe every move. We know chess is played in total silence. But this time, it's the studio I've got. Uh, full charge of the studio so it's now for you to play a quick game as you explain to the public how this one goes so I start with you Jamie get going the play starts now so what was that movie? E4 all right mm -hmm. over to you Masi uh, I play E5 Jamie um, I play Knight F3 all right, so this is the rapids, and over to you, Marcy. Uh, I play knight c6. Okay, Jamie, to you. Um, bishop c4. Oh, huh? Quickly to you, Marcy. Uh, I play knight to f3. Okay, to you, Jamie. Um, king castle, is it? Mm -hmm. All right, so he's castled uh, that rook. So now let's move on to you, Marcy. Uh, I play bishop c5. Okay, to you, Jamie. This is a rapid rapid. <laughs> um, c3. Okay. A castle. Mas Aha, castling king. I can see that move. Now, let's move out to, over to you, Jamie. I'm d4. Oh. Mercy. Uh -huh. Five. Uh, e four. takes d4. <laughs> All right, to you, Jamie. C takes D4. Okay. And one piece is gone. Over to you, Massey. Uh, bishop to E7. Jamie. Uh, E5. Okay. Massey. Uh, I play... Uh, I, hope you're, I hope you're not consulting. Massey, 5, 4... I, I play. 2... Mate. <laughs> Over to you, Jamie. <laughs> um. Okay. Five, four, three. <laughs> Queen E2. And, okay. <laughs> this is a to be fan. <laughs> and you know the chess Africa president is here. He's the arbiter. So he knows this is a rapid. Over to you, Marcy. I play D. Okay, good. How far are we from having somebody put on check? Uh, not, uh, not close. It's still a bit early. Yeah. yeah. Well, over the two next, I'm, I'm going to give you a, some two more moves, and you can tell me how you can, you know, put each your opponent on check or probably on checkmate. So, whose uh, move is it? Massey, it's your move. Uh, it's Jamie's. Uh, J Jamie, your move. Bishop D. P. Okay, Massey. A quick one. I uh, play bishop. All right. Jamie, your final move. Knight C P. All right. And now let's move over to Massey's final move. Knight takes. O 
Okay, so just by looking at that chess board and uh, Frank, you can just give me that chess board and we can speak with uh, President Hube here. Just by looking at that chess board on the screen, who would be closer to pulling off a, a, a check move? Okay, so um, in terms of the placing of the pieces, uh, uh, Mercy has got uh, maybe a slight advantage, but it's not, it's not immediately a winning advantage. Uh -huh. So if I was to adjudicate, I would probably say, I would say it's a draw, it's a at, draw. The, at, the, at the moment, yes. Uh -huh. But obviously with time, maybe uh, there could be some moves, but it's too early. So if you are adjudicating now, I would say the game is a draw. Okay, you've heard it from uh, President Tube of the Africa Chess Confederation. And now let the youngsters give a final message. I'll go, the uh, ladies first. Mercy, a message to young chess competitors. What would you like to tell them? And after that, over to you, Jamie, as we wrap up. Uh, to the young competitors and those upcoming, I'll encourage them to continue playing chess. Uh, chess is good. Uh, it helps them in uh, various fields. Not only, uh, it's not only just uh, uh, for fun. Chess takes people far, actually. And uh, yeah, so I'll encourage them to play chess. And also, others who are not playing chess, I can encourage. I, I encourage them to start playing chess. It's a good game. Yep. Okay, and over to you, Jamie. Um, pretty much what Masi has said, but also. Um, to anyone who's feeling down, um, feeling as if the game is not taking you anywhere, the game will take you far, very far. So don't give up, no matter how hard it gets, you, you can still make it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jamie. And uh, f he won a bronze medal at the Africa you know, Schools Championships in the Under 13 division, and Masi, who won a gold in the Under 17s. And also, President Kluber, thank you very much. Thank you. And we wish to see chess grow a lot in the schools. Next, let's talk about the first guys. And we're talking about a team that captured the hats of Kenyans last year. You all love that car. You always say it's the one in front of you. But also, you also named the world champion who was driving for that team. You gave him a name from Kenya. But overall, the impact was felt. We shall be speaking with the team principal of Toyota Gazoo Racing World Rally Team, a former rally driver himself, Yarimat Ladvala. And that is coming up after this short break. <laughs> 